Hi, my name is Bob Ford. I'm with Bauer Ford Reclamation. Our company started back in 1989 when uh, Anthony Bauer and Bob Ford joined forces. Anthony Bauer is a landscape architect who was a professor at Michigan State University at the time. I'm a practicing landscape architect and the two of us together formed a company called Bauer Ford Reclamation. What we're able to do is travel the, the world in doing reclamation of mining sites. The uh, specific techniques that we use are analytical at first in describing exactly where the mining deposit is, how wide, and how deep. Once that information is known, we're able to take that information and utilize it to create a new environment. And that can be any environment except for another mine site because the mineral will have been depleted. But in the art of doing that, what's really key is being able to take that mineral and getting the maximum value out of the best quality of that mineral, while at the same time leaving some mineral in place so that you can add value to the end of that particular mine site. And that means a secondary use. The secondary use is important because it can overlap the community's long-term goals and interests by being able to take the end-use plan and present it before community forums and gain support in the process of overlapping programs between the mining interest and the community's interests. And that, in a nutshell, begins to forecast what that end-use plan can be and the long-term benefits, not only to the developer and the, and the mining company, but also to the community. And that's our goal and that's our program. One of the, the projects that we have right here is the CTE River Raisin Project. And in this project, it begins to show you how we analyze on a grid, computerized, digital basis, both seismic and uh, validated by boring information, to be able to determine where the deposit is located. Once we have that deposit, we can then begin to forecast where the uh, borrow pits are going to uh, remain, and in most cases, be able to fill with water to create lakes and added value. In this case, we have multiple subdivisions. It's in a rural area, and we were able to match the community's interests with the mining company's interests and produce this type of, uh, of a plan. Another one is located over here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And in Tulsa, what we were able to do is to take five square miles of land and create a new environment which included new school, a signature golf course, residential community, commercial development, new town, and also industrial development, along with a recreational plan that uh, integrates all of those land uses to make it a livable community. This plan spans a hundred years, so it's a hundred year plan. We're in phase two of a 15 year phased uh, development. And people are living alongside of an active mine site. And it's hard for, hard for people to understand that these two uses can be compatible. But this is the third project that we've had active mining and end use development happening at the same time. Hi, I'm Bob Ford. I'm president and founder of Landscape Architects and Planners. We a lot of times will go by LAP Inc. Our company is based in Lansing, Michigan. We have been in existence since 1989. We have a wide variety of landscape architectural uh, work we do. We like to consider ourselves generalists because we're able to do so many different things, but at the same time, within our organization, we have specific niches that we do focus on. For example, one of our projects here is a rain garden. And in many parking lot situations, which occur in just about any development, we're able to reduce the carbon footprint by taking that rain garden and allowing a lot of the sediments to filter out before that water reaches the tributaries and back into the streams. We're able to reduce the amount of pollution. We're able to infiltrate that water back into the groundwater so that it recharges the aquifer. That's one example. 
Another example is Hawk's Nest in East Lansing, Michigan. And in this project, what we were able to do is to take a fallowed piece of ground left over from a housing development where there was very little natural materials left on site. And it was reverting, trying to revert back, but because it was depleted not only of its topsoil and natural resource, the only thing that would, would live there are very strong and uh, in, not indigenous plants, the invasive species. What we did is went back in time to the archives of the state of Michigan, and we were able to find the original surveyors' uh, cross-sectional survey notes for this particular piece of ground. And in the notes, pre-European settlement notes, we were able to find the little clues that told us what that landscape was originally, at least back before pre-European settlement. And in doing so, we were able to recreate that particular uh, landscape and bring it back into this area, maintaining the natural flow, maintaining the natural groundwater, and also being able to bring back the exact species that were there. An old swamp oak, for example, a cranberry bog, those were some of the things that those surveyors would know back in their uh, notes. We give a lot of credit to the way that they were able to do things back then and how fastidious they were in their note taking. Other projects include non-motorized transportation plans where we're able to look at entire communities and find out and project how we're going to connect, not necessarily relying on that automobile all the time. There again, reducing that carbon footprint and allowing people to get the exercise that they need to form healthy and sustainable lifestyles. Other things include learning gardens and interpretive panels where we can go ahead and be able to educate uh, people in a way about their environment and about some of these natural systems. Uh, those are just some of the examples of what we have done. But we have uh, spanned the globe in terms of different types of landscape architecture and we can literally design anything in a sustainable way from the building footprint outward into the either urban or natural environment. Hi, my name is Bob Ford. Uh, I'm working with a company called Sustainable Strategies, and one of the products of Sustainable Strategies is this remarkable fertilizer called Sea Crop America. Sea Crop is an extraction from the Pacific Ocean. It's at a depth of 72 feet or more, and is a purified uh, uh, salt uh, 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 seawater that is extracted, and we're able to take the salt or desalinate it down to a point where it contains 86 minerals. And uh, over a hundred different elements that are put back into the soil. This allows us to regenerate soil and allows plants to grow in that medium and become a much healthier plant and more disease resistance. They grow faster, they grow larger, and they also provide us with flavor that we used to know back in the 1930s and 40s. In addition, it allows us to reduce the amount of pesticides that we're depending on on our, on our farming uh, community now and provides a much more uh, uh, eco-friendly way of going and uh, replenishing the soil. This gets down to the microflora uh, bacteria levels and creates a very rich environment, even in some very poor soils, so that we can reestablish topsoil. And it has been stated in scientific studies that we're able to create topsoil at about one inch per two years, whereas Mother Nature takes about 100 years to develop one inch of topsoil. So this remarkable product is natural. And when you think about it, over the course of time, what's happened? A lot of the weather patterns have, and the urbanization have taken and depleted our soils, where at one time they were covered by seawater. And most of those soils originated from that original base of seawater. So with this product, we're starting to replenish that and reduce that carbon footprint because it takes a lot less of the machinery and the other types of things to create <coughs> this type of uh, produce. This is a great product and we're endorsing it and we are marketing it. People can call us direct if they want. The number is 
1-800-242-5573. And uh, Sustainable Strategies will answer that call. Email, you can reach me at uh, robert.ford at sustainablestrategies.com.